Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a look at the distribution of the sample ranges. We're taking the same population as we did in the previous video, a population that consists of zeros, twos, four, sixes, and eights. There's multiples of each, the same number of each. And then what we're going to do is again, we just determine the sample size and since the sample size is 2, again there's 25 different possible ways in which we can have a sample of 2 because we can pick a 0 the first one and again a 0 for the second one, a 0 for the first and a 2 for the second, a 0 for the first and a 4 for the second assuming that the population is very very large so when we pull one out the remainder of the zeros is still the same or the remainder of any number is still the same essentially when we have a very large population so there's an equal probability that any one of those 25 possible combinations is picked we then calculate the range of each sample and notice the range is simply the difference between the one number and the other number so the range between those two is zero the range between those two is two the range between those two is four and so forth so we have all the ranges of all 25 samples so then we calculate the probability of getting the average of each of the ranges so notice we can have a range of zero a range of two a range of four a range of six or a range of eight since the range of 0 appears 5 times and there's 25 combinations, 5 out of 25 is 0.2. For the range of 2, notice there is 4 plus 4 is 8 different combinations, 8 divided by 25 is 0.32. Notice for the range of 4, there is 6 possibilities, 6 out of 25 is 0.24. Then we can see there is 4 sixes, which means 4 out of 25 is 0.16. And there's two ranges of 8, which is 2 out of 25, or 0 0.08. And then, when you add all those up, you should get 1. So that's 24, 48, 50, 80, 20. Yes, indeed, that is indeed 1, so we didn't make any mistakes. And finally, we draw a histogram. Notice that it's somewhat of a normal distribution, but it's skewed to the right. It's high, more likely that you get a smaller range compared to a large range and that's the nature when we start calculating the ranges of each of the samples especially when the sample size is small you can have more of the smaller ranges than you can have of the larger ranges but now what we should, probably should calculate is what is the mean or the average of all the ranges and to find the mean or the average what we need to do is we need to multiply the average not the average but yes the average the average of each of the occurrences so we have 0 2 4 6 or 8 and the probability that that number will occur so now we're going to multiply the two together and when we do that we get 0 right here here we get 0 0.64 here we get um, 0 0.96 here we get uh, 0 0.96 again, I believe. Let's see, that's 36 again. Yeah, that's 0 0.96. And here we get 0 0.64. When we add them together, we get 10, 20. That's 0, 2. That's 20. That's 3.20. So what we can say here is that the average or the mean, the average or the mean of the averages is equal to 3.2. Now remember, this is for the range and not for the mean so this is not really the mean this is the average of the ranges and it's 3.2 which there's no correlation of course between the population in that respect and the samples because here what we did with with the samples we simply did a distribution a histogram of the ranges of the samples rather than the averages of the samples so again think of the x with a line out as the average number or the typical number of uh, ranges. So maybe we won't even put the average on there. We simply say x is the range of that and how many times does that occur? What's the probability of occurring? So maybe we want to write it like that rather than with a line on top just to see that we're not really dealing with the averages but we're dealing with the ranges in this case. The range is 2, what's the probability of that occurring? The range is 4, what's the probability of that occurring? That might be a better way of looking at it. So we'll just get rid of the little lines so we're not dealing with the average or the means. So that is how we do it. The distribution of the sample ranges is calculated like that. 
And that is how it's done. Is that the key? All right. Okay.